and in Atlanta and focus on the march toward postseason. It won't be easy against two wild card contenders this week. Up first, the Dodgers with a roster full of new faces. Aaron Harang and Jordan Zimmerman get things started. It's the first of two on Masson. It's the last time the Nats played them. Danny Espinosa's shoulder appears to be okay, and Michael Morris's wrist. Great to have those guys to face Matt Kemp and the Dodgers. Game one of the doubleheader straight ahead.
The ball was flying to the tune of 27 home runs in 18 games. The last time the Nats, actually 11 games, the last time the Nats were here. Who knows how it'll play as cooler September temperatures have arrived. 70 degrees, visit train.com for an independent train comfort specialist dealer near you. It's hard to stop a train. It is perfectly clear. Hitters will have some changing sunlight and shadow conditions to deal with. As the day goes along, it'll be an, an adjustment period for everybody. Four o'clock start or shortly thereafter. And we're underway right at 4.05 as Jordan Zimmerman throws a strike to the second baseman, Mark Ellis. So the Nats at home are 44 and 27. The Dodgers on the road are 36 and 36. Jordan Zimmerman faces L.A. for only the second time in his career. Yeah, last time out he received a no decision in Tuesday's five to win. Five to three win in New York allowed two runs on six hits over five innings. Struck out six, walked three, threw 84 pitches, 57 for strikes. Two balls and a strike to Mark Ellis, who's hitting 266. And it's nice to be back with you, partner. <laughs> What's your name again? Mike, <laughs> and I'll be doing the color today. Well, Brian Knight will be doing the plate. Clint Fagan at first, crew chief Mike Winters, 23-year veteran second base, and Mark Wegner at third. Alan Porter should have the plate for the nightcap tonight. And that's Zimmerman just missing three and two. So, folks, there might be an inning or two adjustment period for the announcers. Haven't done a game since last Friday. So this feels like Vieira, Florida, and we haven't worked in almost a week. 3-2 <laughs> pitch just missing away. Ellis aboard to start the game. Dodgers are 11th in the league and hitting a 249. And these are surprising numbers. They're 14th in runs and second from the bottom in home runs. Matt Kemp's been hurt. Hanley Ramirez got here late from the Marlins, of course, but he always hits Washington pitching. And then, of course, Shane Victorino, a major pain in the side for the Phillies against the Nats over the years is only hitting 209 from the left side and only 234 as a Dodger. So things have not worked out for them since that big trade with Boston like they thought they would. There's a strike to Andre Ethier. In fact, he might be their most consistent batter right now. Five out of 16 over a modest four-game hitting streak. Nats have held him down pretty well at Dodger Stadium earlier this year, but they were swept three in a row. That's another strike. Ethier hitting 287 overall and against Jordan Zimmerman career one for three. Andre Ethier's 30 years of age now. 291 career hitter. And the little tapper stays in the batter's box foul. Suzuki alertly throws to second and beyond, but uh, no problem. It was a foul ball. Let's go inside the numbers with STG and check out the repertoire for Jordan Zimmerman. Fastball averaging 93.9 miles an hour. Slider curve change to go with it. Secondary pitches is more a feel for Jordan. If he's got the good slider going, he'll wear that out. If he's got the curveball going, he'll go with that. Last two times out, fastball command has been a little questionable. But the curveball has been a secondary pitch where the majority of the season it was the slider. So... Even though we walked Mark Ellis to start this game off, you can see the fastball so far down in the zone, and that's a good sign for Davey Johnson and the Nats. And because of two days off and a rainout, he hasn't pitched since a week ago yesterday. Now that's a breaking ball that's upstairs. Ethier just got a piece of it. So on 9-11 at New York, five innings, two runs, six hits. 84 pitches over that time. Nats would go on to win that game 5-3 to three, on their way to a three-game sweep before... The tough weekend in Atlanta. Looking for win number 90. And so are the Cincinnati Reds who are at Chicago tonight. The Reds have won their last game. So they're 89 and 59. The Nats are 89 and 57 for the best records in the National League. Look out right off the screen in front of the Nats dugout. And that's that tiny little slider that Jordan will go to in a two-strike count to left-handers. Almost like a cut fastball. Try to bury it down and in at the back knee of lefties. Good pitch. Dodgers are a game and a half behind St. Louis in that crazy 
National League wildcard race, a game up on Milwaukee. And a bouncer, that should be two. Desmond from Espinosa. And with Danny back in the lineup, they turn the 4 6 3. Espinosa not expected to play last night. Shoulder feeling a little bit better. He got a shot, and they turn a nice double play. You've been waiting a long time for it. It's your Mazda defensive alignment. Let's check it out for the Nats today. Outfield from left to right, Morris Harper worth. Uh, left side of the infield, Desmond Zimmerman. Right side, Espinosa LaRoche. Kurt Suzuki doing the catch and brought to you by your D.C. area Mazda dealers. We believe if it's not worth driving, it's not worth building. What do you drive? 118th double play turned by the Nats this year. So Matt Kemp hitting 302, but slumping in September is up there with the bases empty. He was off to an unbelievable start in April. And when the Nats were at Dodger Stadium the final weekend of that month, every time he did something, and that series did include him hitting a walk-off homer against the Nats, they were chanting MVP at that time. He looked like he was headed for one of the greatest seasons ever. Yeah, a lot of injuries with the hamstring and now some shoulder problems running into some walls. But when you talk about his September, just a 122, 6 for 49. Mm. One homer, two RBIs. That's 12 games in the month. On a pitch up and away, a swing and a miss. So after the walk, the double play looms large, and then Jordan gets the strikeout. Visit Jeep.com to learn more. And by Verizon Fios, introducing quantum speed from Verizon. Internet twice as fast as anything America has ever seen. It's a nice casual afternoon to take a metro ride down to the Navy Yard Station, saunter into the ballpark with a lot of baseball coming up. Dodge dealer, see him and experience a world of performance design and fuel efficiency. Schedule a test driver, go to Dodge.com, check out the powerful lineup. The Nats are fourth in the league in hitting, fifth in runs, second in home runs. And Jason Worth has a career homer against Darren Harang. FP will give you the outline of this pitcher in a moment, who steps in tonight with a record of 104 and 103 in his career. Sit back, relax, watch a couple of ball games here, and then the O's in Seattle at 10 o'clock. Big day for Masson. Ball yeah. everywhere. Yeah, Masson had a telethon last night. It was called the Orioles at the Mariners. <laughs> they got another one today. <laughs> so they played 18, but I think we may only play 17 tonight. I like how you think. If there's no bottom in the ninth in both games, that could work out. We shall see. It's tough to sweep doubleheaders. And, of course, the Braves beaten last night after they tied it in the ninth and lost it in the tenth. At Miami. Two and one to Worth, who's three for 13 career against Darren Harang. And that good batting eye says no swing, and it's three and one. Jason steps in, hitting 303. 322 since he came off the DL 40 games ago. Pretty good rip at a pitch up. And that's what Aaron Harang will do pitch effectively up in the strike zone with his fastball. 
It's a guy that throughout his career throws in the upper 80s and low 90s, and you'll see hitter after hitter and hitting counts follow that high fastball straight back because the deception is delivery. Sneaky fast, got to gear up. 3 2. Just like that. Yep. We'll check out the repertoire for Aaron Harang. STG inside the numbers. Fastball slider, cutter, curveball change. We just talked about the fastball. Tiny little slider to go with it. It's a guy you kind of got to zone down because he will try to nibble at the top of the strike zone. Worth hits it well to right. Fighting the sun, Ethier. Drifting and using his glove as shade for the first out. Right field is going to be a bear here for the next hour or so. Let's set the defense for the Dodgers today in game one behind Aaron Harang. Outfield from left to right. Victorino Kemp Ethier. Infield on the left side, Ramirez Cruz. Right side, Mark Ellis, Adrian Gonzalez, and A.J. Ellis doing the catching. Nats will see Josh Beckett in the nightcap. John Lennon goes for Washington. And here's Bryce Harper, who did not see Aaron Harang that weekend in L.A. That was a very late swing. Bryce, though, last 18 games, 17 runs, 13 RBIs. 347 over the last three weeks. Fastball misses. One other game in baseball today. The Yankees and the Blue Jays are playing a day-night doubleheader. The Yankees got their 84th win. They won game one behind Andy Pettit. No other games in progress for a while now. And a 1-1 to Harper. So this is what you would call a traditional twilight doubleheader. Uh -huh. And I love that term. I remember when I was a young man that these games would, first game would start about 5.30. Second one would start about 8 o'clock and you'd be home by 11. Yeah. <laughs> Not sure that happens anymore. <laughs> one ball and two strikes. You know, there has been some conversation around baseball that if they would schedule more doubleheaders, they could finish the regular season a little earlier, and you wouldn't be worrying about World Series games in November or all, thereabouts. All doubleheaders and finish in July. <laughs> That's a swing and a miss on a pitch tailing down and away. Bryce Harper down two outs. Ryan Zimmerman will be next. The Nats need to get that magic dumb number down just three to clinch at least a wild card and 10 for the division outright. We mentioned that crazy homestand when they beat St. Louis three out of four, swept the Cubs, lost two out of three to Miami, but hit for great power. And Jordan Zimmerman, tough to score on early. Arguably the toughest pitcher in baseball in the first three innings. And he got the double play and the strikeout today. Ryan Zimmerman was on a 16 game inning streak till the Nats arrived in Atlanta and then he went two for 12 as the Braves pitched really well in that entire weekend series. When you talk about the magic number being three for a postseason berth, I think it might be a bigger deal than people would like to talk about right now. Maybe yeah, it's one more game. But when you talk about not being in the playoffs in this city since 1933, it's huge. There's only been one postseason berth in this franchise history. It was in 1981 with the Expos. So, kind of a big deal, I would say. Well, Davey Johnson, look at that. 29 games over 500 since taking over. In June of last year for Jim Riggleman, Ryan Zimmerman did not like that two and one call. So instead of three and one, the count's even. Let's check it out. Fastball 91. Was it down? Ryan thought so. Bottom of the zone. What's the question you asked umpires? Is that as low as we're going to go? Yeah. We'll find out. It's now, a, it, that one's upstairs. But like I always say, and I've said it all season long, it's about the presentation the catcher gives more than that box that shows where the ball crosses. If you let your glove go below the strike zone as you catch the ball, you didn't frame it as a strike, and it shouldn't be called a strike. Zimmerman doesn't care. <laughs> He's got a base hit to right. So the unflappable Ryan Zimmerman Gets the Nats a two out hit, first base runner. A nice piece of hitting right there, two strikes. A little 92 mile an hour sinker down the way. Zimmerman goes with it. Uses that hole on the right side. First hit of a long night of baseball. And I think I'm supposed to say something right here, right? Yes, you are. 
there goes the no-hitter, something like At that. At 420 p.m. It's been a while. It's the earliest you've said that in a while. I feel like we're football broadcasters doing a game a week. I got my charts ready. <laughs> got my three deeps. Adam LaRoche is hitting 269, but since we last visited with you, he's hit his 30th home run. And he is seventh in the league with 94 RBIs. I think some of the Nats would take a little exception to what might have been heard on national TV earlier today when somebody said no MVP candidates on the Washington Nationals. I think we would beg to differ because of Adam LaRoche. This ball is headed to left center. Hanging up over to grab it from left field is Shane Victorino. By the way, here come the new Dodgers with Gonzalez, Ramirez, and Victorino. The Nats know all these guys really well. Second room of flooring free at 877-241-LUNA. Ballpark will be filling out as the afternoon turns into the evening. Nats have the only base hit by Ryan Zimmerman. First inning for Jordan Zimmerman, 17 pitches and 11 strikes. And here on Masson, the Dodgers and the Nats game two tonight. That will be Josh Beckett for L.A. and John Lennon for the Nationals. Chris Capuano goes. He's 11 and 10 tomorrow against Ross Detweiler. So the lefties will rule tomorrow evening. And then a very improved and well-playing and fence-busting Milwaukee Brewers ball club will be here this weekend. Nats took three out of four from them in Wisconsin about a month and a half ago. But the Brewers have been one of the better teams in baseball since. Adrian Gonzalez will plug the gap in left center. First pitch, top of the second. Who makes it that close? Bryce Harper did. Gonzalez hit 300 for the Red Sox, but only 233 for the Dodgers before that base hit. Sure double all the way to the warning track. And Bryce Harper just grabbed that thing, winged it in. You see the accuracy and the arm strength. Nice piece of hitting by Adrian Gonzalez for the first Dodger hit of game one. But watch this. Just sling it from the warning track right on the money. <laughs> and Gonzalez just beats it. Wow. And Adrian Gonzalez is 45th double of the year. Next up is Nationals Tormentor Hanley Ramirez. For the Dodgers, he's hitting 264. 10 of his 24 home runs, 38 of his 86 RBIs. And that's in 49 games, so he's been better than average. Not spectacular for them so far. But he is 7 for 15 career against Jordan Zimmerman. He was opening up and trying to make it 2 nothing right there. Yeah, he didn't look like he was trying to move the runner at all. Hanley Ramirez got a fastball down and in. He was trying to leave. Talking to some of the Dodger guys yesterday, they said that's the problem with this offense. The Dodgers have a bunch of big hitters, doubles, and home run guys. But they don't really have people who move base runners. So they've been pretty much all or nothing lately. You know, they'll have some big innings, three or four runs. 
But at certain times when you need that one run to scratch out, Don Mattingly's offense hasn't been able to do that. No, early in the year, they'd bunt guys over. They'd hit and run, play the game the right way. And after the trade, it's pretty much an all or nothing offense. You've got to bet on the big hit, the home run. And it just hasn't happened. It's a good lineup, though. You just sit here and think it's just a matter of win, not if. Zimmerman jamming Hanley Ramirez right there, and he fought it off. By the way, Jordan Zimmerman, only one previous career start back in 09 against the Dodgers. He gave up six runs in the first inning, gave up nothing after that for five more innings, and the Nationals back then came from behind to win a ball game against L.A. That's a busted bat. It's up the middle near the bag. Espinosa to gun out Ramirez. So in that instance, he does move the runner ahead. And that is a great piece of hitting right there by Hanley Ramirez. Must have heard us talking up here about how the Dodgers don't execute as well as they did in the first half of the season. But you take a 95 mile an hour sinker chasing you on the inner half and get your hands inside. That is a pretty piece by Hanley Ramirez to get Adrian Gonzalez to third base with one out. Nice job. I mean, look at this fastball. Two seam chasing him. Breaks his bat. Gets inside of it. See the inside out rotation. Nice piece. Bat died a hero. You move the runner. Here's Shane Victorino. Another Nats nemesis while with the Phillies. And for LA in 41 games, hitting a surprisingly low 234. And the thing I can't believe about Shane after watching him for so many years is how this guy could be hitting 209 from the left side. That's a breaking ball way inside that chased his spikes in there and almost hit him. It gives you an idea what Jordan Zimmerman is thinking right now with Victorino up a 1 0 slider down and in. He's looking for the punch out. Yeah. Infield back. And that uh, 209 from the left side is as a Dodger. Zimmerman in on his trademark there and he fights it off. It's out of play. Lots of talent, lots of payroll added to the Dodgers. Those four just from the Red Sox and then Ramirez and left hander Randy Choate came over from the Marlins and then Victorino with right hander Joe Blanton from the Phils. Transactions that change the faces of a lot of teams in this league. Good looking fastball, but it's inside three and one. It's good pitch. Two seam fastball. Tried to run it back to catch the front corner. Did it get it? Good frame by Suzuki on the backside. Didn't buy the call. Fourth year veteran Brian Knight has the plate for game one. Target away. Fastball out there. Second walk of the game, first and third for the Dodgers, one out. That will bring in 28 year old infielder Luis Cruz, who had just parts of three major league seasons with the Pirates and the Brewers before this. 08 09 with Pittsburgh. Two years ago, just 17 at bats with the Brewers. Playing third base right now for the Dodgers and hitting 295. That's a busted bat. Straight up it goes. Kurt Suzuki for a very important second out. Well, I'll tell you what, the run on Jordan Zimmerman's two seam fastball early in this game has been as good as I've seen it all year. That combined with the shadows right now, the tough visibility at the plate has equaled a couple broken bats. Look at the run on that two seamer and a huge out right here. Early in this game. Runner on third base, one out. You get a pop-up. That's as good as a strikeout. That brings in a Dodger who's been one of their better hitters in the second half. So at uh, 429 local time, the shadow's right over the pitcher's mound now. And this is the catcher, A.J. Ellis, who despite going over his last 17, is hitting 270. And he's driven in 42 runs. 31-year-old veteran. Runner goes off the first. The Nats will ignore Victorino. Came into this game second in the league in steals, and that's number 36. His 12th since he's become an L.A. Dodger. Big jump right there. Zimmerman concentrating on the hitter. Hit a spot. No throw from Suzuki. 
Dodgers eighth in the league in steals. That's their 94th bag of the year. But the counts 0 2. Yeah, even though the counts 0 2, you got a base right here. Two outs. The first base is open. Aaron Harang on deck with an 0 60 average on the year. Yeah. You'd like to get A.J. Ellis out and have Aaron Harang lead off the third, but with the pitcher on deck, you, you have a lot of room to work right here in an 0 2 count. And again, as you made the point, that fastball really jumping inside the right handed hitters here. Already busted two bats in this inning. Target in. Got him in there again. And A.J. Ellis, who has a really respectable 374 on base percentage for a catcher hitting at this part of the lineup, able to fight another one off. So the pitch count mounting. Jordan threw 17 pitches top of the first. And here comes number 17 this inning. FP, what's the toughest part about the shadows, the sun, and the batter's eye out there is in the blazing sun? They're picking up rotation on the off speed. You can see the fastball. Uh, but you can't pick up the sideways rotation. You can't pick up the seams right now. And that hits him to load the bases. And that's not the worst thing in the world. Right now for A.J. Ellis it is. Because it doesn't feel real good. But with Aaron Harang on deck. 090 career hitter. And as you mentioned, 060 this year. He's 3 for 50. First target, outer half. Harang up hacking. Why not? Aaron Harang, by the way, from Steven Strasburg's alma mater, San Diego State. Oakland, Cincinnati. Oakland, Cincinnati on his resume. Played for both teams a couple of times. Desmond to the bag. That was a tricky little last hop. And as he went to the bag, there was a lot of baseball showing in that glove. So Michael Morris, hopefully that wrist feeling well, about to lead off. the military for over 75 years if you're in the army marine corps navy air force the department of defense or if your family is we'd be proud to serve you as well dine corp international we serve today for a better tomorrow and initially part of the u.s army the air force formed as a separate branch 
of the military, September 18th of 1947. And while the Air Force celebrates that date as its official birthday, the history of the branch stretches nearly as far back as the airplane itself. Let's check out that ending ending play with Ian Desmond. Now, there's a little tricky hop here at the end. You, you see the inside out swing from Harang, and the ball had some serious spin on it. This last shot we're going to show you. Follow the bouncing ball. Watch it go towards second base, kind of away from Ian Desmond the whole way. Those are not easy plays, folks. That ball hits into your glove, and it's still spinning. So what Ian Desmond made look like an easy play really wasn't. And he has such amazing athletic ability. He will bet after Michael Morris. We'll call this bottom of the second our medical rehab inning because Morris gets a couple of days off now. Hopefully that wrist feeling better. And then Danny Espinosa got news on Monday that was good about the MRI in his shoulder. No labrum problem, nothing like that, just a bone bruise. And he got a cortisone shot, so hopefully we'll see some good swings here. Because the Nats have been missing some good swings from these guys. Vital parts of this offense hitting fifth and seventh around Ian Desmond. And uh, the first test of the day looks pretty good. Michael Morse checks in with Washington's second base hit. Oh, this game is easy, right? Eight days off. You ice your sore wrist. Take some anti-inflammatories. First at bat back. Line drive up the middle. Base hit. So leadoff man aboard here in the second for the Nats. Michael Morse, good sign for everybody involved in a red uniform. Looked good swinging the bat. Did you see A.J. Ellis snap his catcher's mitt there? He thought he was going to catch that ball. That means to me that Michael let that thing get deep and then hit it really well. Or that he's not seeing it just like the hitters. <laughs> That's a possibility. Here's Desmond, and he's hitting 377 over his last 17 games. Two for five career against Harang. And by the way, with that base hit a moment ago, Michael Morris is three for four career against the right-hander. Target away. Desmond's going to take the first two. Tough guy to walk. 24 of them this year in 460 official at-bats. I mean, you have to miss bat on the first two pitches to Ian Desmond in any ball game for him to take him. He's swinging on 2-0. and oh. This one popped up over near the barrier, and it'll get into the seats. Let's go inside the numbers, find out why employees choose stginc.com. And the slugging percentage by Ian Desmond right where it was in July before he strained that oblique. By the way, he's fifth in the, actually eighth in the league now with a 517 slugging percentage. How about that for a shortstop? A couple of Dodgers people asking me before the game, how in the world does Ian Desmond have 23 home runs? And I said, well, huh. no, Davey Johnson. He worked with them, said, hey, enough of that pushing the ball to right field thing. You're a big guy. If the ball's in, just drop your hands on it. Use your size and use your pop and pull the baseball, and he has. And Ian, of course, by traditional shortstop standards, a big young man listed at 6'2", 210. That's probably not very unusual anymore. Shortstops are bigger than they ever have been. And then he'll, he'll wait when he has to and hit the ball hard the other way, but he's driving the ball this year. And if he doesn't miss a month, he may be flirting with 30 home runs right now. That ball driven up the middle. Matt Kemp comes forward to grab it. Having to hustle back is Morse. And if that throws on target, they would have had Michael doubled off. Kind of no man's land for a base runner right there. Well, a tough read for Michael Morse, especially when you haven't played in eight days. But look how far he goes on that line drive. He's thinking that's going to drop. He wants to be the second for Desmond. And you called it. Look how far he extends right there. Matt Kemp with a good throw, an accurate throw. Doubles Morse up. Good hustle to get back. So one on one out, and here comes Danny Espinosa now. Who just couldn't generate anything in the Atlanta series. He went 0 for 11 with a double play ball and nine strikeouts. And he gets his bat busted, drops one down the right field line. 
Michael Morse can read that ball and go to third base. So the guys who've been beaten up deliver for the Nats in their first at bats after some time off. And Espinosa with a shot of cortisone in his left shoulder. It's been barking. You know, I was going to say we can only hope it has the same result as Zimmerman's well, did that's a couple where I'm of months ago. Shots of cortisone on me, everyone. So far, so good <laughs> for Danny Espinosa. One for one. A great read by Michael Morse. So he hustles back, avoids the double play. Reads the sound off the bat, and as a base runner, when you hear a broken bat, you know the ball's going to drop. Good read by Michael Morse to advance to third on the Espinosa single. Big spot now in the number eight hole with one out for Kurt Suzuki. He's at 16 RBIs. As a net in 30 games, batting 250. He's only seen Harang once in his career, 0 for 1. It's just huge to get the lead any game for the Nationals. We talk about our favorite stat in the whole world, but I think very key in this game because as the day wears on, this ballpark is going to fill up. And if you can give your fans something to cheer about, not a lot of fans here now, but you know, fifth, sixth, seventh inning, this place will be rocking. It's important to get out front. And on the other side, the Dodgers are used to playing games where nobody's in the stands until the third inning. <laughs> and that's a good baseball man right there. His team fighting for a wild card spot. A lot of folks thought they would challenge the Giants, but they're eight and a half back. Suzuki looking a little uncertain on that fastball, and now it's 0-2. It looked like both of those fastballs got on Kurt Suzuki. He was in swing mode, and whether it's because of the shadows or not, he wanted to fire off the swing. Just looked like the ball got by him. Good hitting pitcher with a homer and three RBIs this year on deck. Just in case Espinosa thought about going to second like Victorino did in the top of this inning. Harang checks him. Let's have a good running ball club when they get opportunities. Espinosa, 19 out of 25 this year. He's holding. Suzuki drives it right center. Certainly deep enough to score a run near the track. Ethier gathers it in. Washington takes the lead on Kurt Suzuki's 17th Nationals RBI. 65 and 18 when the Nationals score first. It's the best record in baseball. One nothing Nats on a great piece of hitting from Kurt Suzuki in a two strike count. And we've seen this from him as a national. Doesn't take much out of his swing when he's behind in the count. Still takes a healthy hack and it pays off right there in a deep fly ball to right to score the beast from third and put the Nats up one nothing. Jordan Zimmerman the hitter. Orang gets the outside corner with a fastball. I just think anytime you throw a guy a fastball in these conditions with the shadows you're doing him a favor. Tough to pick up off speed right now. Yeah, maybe he came out of the bullpen not feeling really good about his off speed stuff or his breaking stuff and then you have to try to convince yourself to throw it. Not easy to do. 1 1 to Zimmerman. Target away. And he hits this one to center. That's going to chase Kemp back and back, and he pulls up to make the grab about 10 feet in front of the track. Last, home, last home stand, that's off the wall. <laughs> this inning, those are some pretty good swings.
MRI only showing a bone bruise. Got that cortisone shot. Felt great. Kicked in. He said he felt great swinging today during BP. And, you know, he said he's been feeling it since the first game of that Marlins series. He dove for a ground ball, felt something pop, and thought he could just play through it, which he tried to do. But you know what? He said he felt too much weakness. Went ahead and got the shot and is feeling good now. On the on another note, when it comes to cortisone, guys, Ryan Zimmerman elected to get another one today after his first one three months ago. General Manager Mike Rizzo spoke about it and said it really really was just something that Ryan felt like he wanted to do. The first one was more something he needed to do to play up to his potential, but Ryan chose to get another one because he was slight, starting to feel that shoulder just the slightest little bit and wanted to be able to, you know, feel 100% again. So another shot for him as well. Uh, on a side note, Bob and I had a shot of cortisone just to get up to the booth today. <laughs> we needed directions. Yeah, it's late in the year. By the way, AFCA.org is the association for IT pros. They bring us Christina's report. And Jordan Zimmerman goes to work top of the third, but, you know, Ryan got that shot back in June. Couldn't extend it all. Got that shot in Baltimore. Goes out and gets a couple of hits that day. Goes to Colorado, nearly tears down Coors Field with his bat, and he's been all-star caliber with the bat ever since. You know, it's funny about those things. Sometimes they work and sometimes they don't. And a number of those shots during my career, low back area, ankle area that just didn't take. So that's good news that... The shots of cortisone are working for everybody involved. Mark Ellis takes a strike. He was diving. That ball ended up up and in on him, but Brian Knight called it a strike, and it counts 2-2. Ellis walked first time, erased on the Andre Ethier 4-6-3 double play ball. I see, that's just a case of guys not picking up the baseball right now at all. When you start a swing at a ball that's going to hit you, you're not safe. You know, watch this two-seam fastball from Jordan running all over Mark Ellis. and Maybe not as bad as it looked initially, but still a fastball that might have hit him and he started to swing. 2-2 two -two again. Out of play to the right side. And you and I have talked about this before when we started seeing the conditions change here, getting out of summer on the last homestand. What you're seeing right now is a bit of an October preview based on when television may make you start certain playoff games. They say good pitching stops good hitting, but sometimes good pitching in a ballpark where it's tough to pick things up really stops hitting. There's Ethier with Kemp to follow here in the top of the third. Target outer half. He paints and gets the strikeout. That's number two for Jordan Zimmerman today. And I bet you if you watch Mark Ellis go back to the dugout, he's going to tell his teammates, I had no idea where this ball was. It happened to be 96 mile an hour paint on the outer half. I mean, good fastball location early in this game from Jordan Zimmerman. We didn't see that last time out in New York today. Much better. Saw it on the Nissan pitch track. Save big at Nissan's bottom line sales event through October 1st. Log on to choosenissan.com or stop by your local dealer. Now Zimmerman starting to build some momentum gets ahead of Andre Ethier. And he can do that. He works so quickly. His work rate is so quick. When he's throwing strikes, things happen in a hurry. And when he gets on a roll, they can happen in a hurry in a good way. And he can pile up some quick innings in a hurry. So here's that graphic we showed you earlier, at least what you're watching reflecting that, how tough he can be in the first three innings of a game. And then staying with the ball is Ethier, right through the hole on the left side. Did not try to pull it. And the Dodgers have their second base hit. Got to bring in Matt Kemp, who struck out on a pitch way up and way outside first time. By the way, the Nats have had more trouble with the West than any other division. Just three games over, 500, 15, and 12. They're 10 over against the East, 17 over against the Central. And they had a winning record in interleague play at 10 and 8. On the other side, the Dodgers have had success against the NL East, 19 and 10 record. That's second only to the Yankees, who were 12 and 3 in interleague play.
Ethier doesn't run much. He's just two for four this year. Seventy ninth start of Jordan Zimmerman's career. Matt Kemp one for four against him, but that one hit is a home run. And Jordan was working too quickly for Kemp, who got time from Brian Knight. He doesn't quick pitch, guys, but he sure gets ready fast. And hitters have to be careful not to let him just speed up the at bat too much. That ball was hanging upstairs, looked like a breaking pitch, and now the Dodgers have something going here in the third. A 2 0 slider up in the zone didn't do a whole lot. Matt Kemp, all systems go looking for a fastball, caught it out front, dropped it over the infield, first and second one out. And when you're struggling like Kemp is, maybe with a banged up shoulder, chiefing it out for the ball club, just seven for 51 now in the month of September. Adrian Gonzalez has hit into 10 double plays this year. Hit the ball extremely hard first time up lined to double to the left center gap. Got a first pitch breaking ball. And such a smart hitter hit a double the other way his first time up. And you can see that was a pull swing thinking he was going to get something in first pitch. Nice job by Kurt Suzuki and Jordan Zimmerman to go off speed. 86 RBIs. For the Red Sox. And now he's tacked on 16 more for the Dodgers. And of course, everybody got all excited when he hit a home run in his first at bat as a Dodger. Hasn't hit one since. Fine career that started actually with Texas back in 04. Then he was originally drafted by the Marlins back in 2000. That sounded like another broken bat. And these are some of the best hitters in the world taking funny swings. A because the stuff is good, but I would say B because they're just not seeing the baseball. And you might be saying, well, how do you two get a hit? How can't get a hit? Well, sometimes you just guess you strike and swing and you get lucky in these conditions. And see Adrian Gonzalez right there. Another broken bat. O2 pitch breaking ball gets him looking dropped it right on the outer half of the plate Gonzalez checking with Brian Knight to ask if it was a strike two down a backdoor curveball by Jordan Zimmerman catches the corner good frame by Suzuki to catch it out front look make it look like a strike good pitch to a good hitter yeah, it'll be Zimmerman now and Hanley Ramirez with two outs. And Ramirez on a busted bat bounced one over the mound first time. Espinosa threw him out. And of course, you might have noticed he's uh, back at shortstop now where he played most of his career with the Marlins, moved to third when Jose Reyes came aboard. Now, Back it short. Let's go inside the numbers on Hanley Ramirez with Kia, who have a full lineup of high quality, stylish, and dependable vehicles. Visit Kia.com. A lot more frequency of home runs now that he's away from Marlins Park. That's a drive to right center, and that'll tie the game. Worth picks it up on a hop, hits the cutoff man, and the Dodgers have tied it. On Hanley Ramirez, 87th RBI of the year. And did a nice job first time up of getting his hands inside the baseball and does a nice job right here. Now pitch away. I think it was on the label. Had a funny sound to it. Dropped it in. Maybe a little higher than Jordan Zimmerman wanted the location. 
But with Andre Ethery on second base, two outs, you go on contact. A big two out RBI for Hanley Ramirez and the Dodgers. So three hits in the inning, four in the game, given up by Zimmerman. What do we got going on in the Dodgers dugout? Looks like some kind of injury over there. Shane Victorino coming in, walked and stole a base his first time. I think it's Clayton Kershaw. And then Zimmerman drops a 79 breaking ball. Fouled off by Shane Victorino. No balls, two strikes. In the 0-2 with a target away. Fly ball for Michael Morrison left. Dodgers will tie the game. Three singles. Ramirez ties it up. Top of the order straight ahead for the Nats. Got hit in the head by the broken bat of Hanley Ramirez. So Ramirez hits the single to right and watch the bat. We don't have it going all the way into the dugout, but it was tracking. We saw the Dodgers trainers looking at Clayton Kershaw's head and there was a cut on the backside of his head. So he's taking it in the clubhouse right now. And a guy who's looks like his season's over. We saw a hip specialist in New York today. That's a tough break, man. You're watching the ball off the bat. You don't think about a bat hit. You know, all of a sudden it blindsides you. We hope he's okay. Top of the uh, order, bottom of the third, it's Jason Worth. Worth the count full first time, flight out to right. 36 pitch for Aaron Harang. 22 strikes so far. A couple of the high pitch counts for the starters in this first game of the doubleheader. Jordan Zimmerman has already thrown 61 pitches in three innings. Worth taking on 2 and 0. Oh. This one will be out of play to the right side. 5 o'clock here at our nation's capital, Nationals Park. About a mile and a half south of the Dome. And right now, the hitting conditions may be improving a bit. The shadows are at the mound and beyond. And a 1-1 game. Seven hits in the game already, so some guys have been able to see the ball and make some contact early here. 
Bryce Harper struck out swinging first time. Ryan Zimmerman a base hit to follow here in the bottom of the third. And Worth will get under one and sky it out beyond shortstop. Hanley Ramirez will yield to the call of Shane Victorino, who ended up making a very long run for that ball. Well, the schedule for next year has been released, and there are 20 game partial season ticket plans available. Go to nationals.com slash 2013. Or call the ticket number at 202 675 Nats. Some restrictions apply. Here's Bryce Harper. Well, it's been interesting to watch him in September. As we mentioned, for the last three weeks, hitting well over 340. Is it enough to get him into the rookie of the year conversation? The 19 homers, 50 RBI should be. He'll bump that ball in the air and it goes out of play. Willene Rosario, the young Colorado catcher, the only rookie with more home runs with 25. And of course, he plays at Coors Field. And then three rookies Rosario, Todd Frazier of the Reds, and Yonder Alonso, a former Red with San Diego, have more RBIs. Harper in the bottom of the top 10 in batting average starting the day at 263. Pretty good September so far. Got jammed on that one. It bounces by the mound. Harper hustling and a good play by Mark Ellis gets him by a step. Well today is Roberto Clemente day around baseball. And Ryan Zimmerman, no surprise with all the wonderful work he does for MS and his Zims Foundation. His mom, Cheryl, has had MS for many years, and Ryan very much involved with his fundraiser every year, the night at the ballpark here, in honor of the late Roberto Clemente, who we lost way too early at the age of 38 back in 1972. A humanitarian himself, and it's just wonderful to have an award named after such a great baseball player and an even better man, Mr. Clemente. Zimmerman to right. Pretty well hit. And that is beyond the reach of Andre Ethier. It'll sure pop the ball. And Ryan Zimmerman has a single, now a double. Maybe only Clemente makes that play out there. Well, I don't even know if Clemente makes that play today just because as an outfielder, same thing applies. You're looking into shadows and you're seeing dark and then all of a sudden the baseball comes out of the dark. It's almost like looking into a movie theater and all of a sudden a ball comes out of it and Ethier got a bad jump on this and that's a good right fielder that got beat. You heard the sound off the bat. You know Zimmerman hit it well but Ethier stood there for about a two count before he broke back because he didn't see the ball off the bat. Ryan now has 55 extra base hits on the year. On double number 32 and here's Adam LaRoche. I'll tell you what Carp is an outfielder you get caught in between too because the sun's in your eyes right so you have to wear your shades. But by wearing your shades you're looking into the strike zone as an outfielder. Now you're making the strike zone even darker by wearing those. Now, I don't know if those are the kind that lighten it up a little bit but it's a catch 22 for an outfielder in a situation like that. You need the shades for the sun once the ball gets out of the shade. But when you're looking in there, it's tough to pick it up. One and oh, now two and oh to a batter with 94 RBIs. There's this ancient old invention way back in the 90s called flip downs. Yeah. And that kind of solved the problem. You'd look in there without shades on, the ball was hit, you flip them down and go get it. Nobody wears those anymore. Yeah, we've had this debate in the past with uh, some of the guys in our training staff who swear the new glasses are just as effective as flip downs. But your point about looking in and trying to see the strike zone and exactly where the bat impacts the ball, uh, hard to see from way out there. Hard to see. So they're going to walk LaRoche, take their chances with Michael Morris, who singled sharply up the middle first time. That's weird. Those one the e e has on. I think those actually make it light in the strike zone. 
Hard to tell, but he didn't get a good jump on that ball either way. Well, somebody from Southern California should know how to handle a sun field, whether it be on the East Coast or wherever. But uh, again, that ball by Zimmerman hit really well. So here's Michael Morse, and he's looking for his 50th RBI, which would be a really nice number for a hitter only playing in his 89th game of the year. Michael has missed so much time because of the lat injury. Coming out of spring training, recent problems with the wrist and a thumb. A two is a better number, though. Second run of the day for the Nats would be nice. Well, good team's answer. As soon as the other guys score, that'll be a strike call, a generous looking strike call. 1 1. Ball high in the zone. Did he catch the corner with it? A little bit out there, but close. Michael three for four career with an RBI against Darren Harang. He's looking to drive the ball. He's not interested in fastballs down there. Nat started the day fifth in the league in runs with the best run differential runs for over runs against in all of baseball. There's that similar pitch, maybe a little higher than the first strike call. And the count's even 2 2. And lots of fastballs so far in this game from Aaron Harang, 85%. Morris on the air, 13 homers to go with those 49 RBIs. He's going to get run up again. Not happy about those calls. Michael Morris, the Nats will strand a couple. They've left four, and this one into the fourth, all tied up. Area Land Rover Center. Beautiful day to take a stroll around the ballpark. And we're honoring our wounded warriors who are here every day, every night game. Set up in the President's Club right behind home plate. We tip our caps to them. There's even a Potomac Nationals cap right there. Good to see those guys. Roberto Clemente and Willie Mays, the most gold gloves among outfielders. They each won 12 in a row. What an era that was with Clemente, Willie Mays. They played together. Not a lot of hits falling in that outfield. <laughs> uh, how about none? Fifteen time All Star Clemente played on two Pirate World Championship teams in 60 and 71, and he won four batting titles. And the MVP in 1966. There's the third baseman, Luis Cruz, who fouled out 
On a sawed off bat to Kurt Suzuki, first time up. But I mean, Willie Mays, Roberto Clemente, Henry Aaron in the same era. Just amazing times. Back in the 60s mainly. Cruz, Ellis, Harang, the bottom three for the Dodgers here in the fourth, and that's a 1 2 pitch way inside. Seventeen, twenty, and then twenty four pitches in Jordan Zimmerman's first three innings. And the ball hit well to left center. That's going to plug the gap, and it's going to one hop and go into the bullpen. A Luis Cruz ground rule double in that number seven spot in the batting order. Second leadoff double of the day. For the Dodgers, see Adrian Gonzalez did it in the second. Now Cruz here in the fourth. Ball hit well in the gap. Two seam fastball pulls the hands in nice. Gets the barrel to the baseball. I'll tell you what, this park is playing big today. Last home stand, 90s, lots of humidity. Ball played, park played very small today, playing large. Here's AJ Ellis hit by a pitch first time. Thinking one run game move the runner, but when you're hitting eighth in this spot, your job is to drive them in. Pitcher on deck, you get something on the inner third, pull it. And that time Zimmerman had him leaning out to catch up with a breaking ball. AJ Ellis this year getting 385 at bats coming into this game. It's about 300 more than he got last year when he hit 271. Dodgers have been looking for a frontline catcher with some offense since Russell Martin departed. And Ellis has given them a pretty good year. Mentioned earlier the on base percentage of over 370. Kind of unusual for that spot in the order to have such a guy. And when at age 31, you're an everyday guy for the first time. You get in the month of September, you got catcher's legs. Mm. You're feeling every bit of that. Into center. Bryce Harper tearing in. You can see the sun light up his glasses on the way. Because he sprinted and made it a routine play for him. The subway surprise on the line is the wild card race. Dodgers a game and a half back of St. Louis. The Cardinals hosting Houston tonight behind Lance Lynn. The Milwaukee Brewers will be here this weekend. Milwaukee's at Pittsburgh tonight behind former Nat Marco Estrada. And then the always lurking Phillies who are at the Mets tonight behind Cole Hamels. First pitch swing, harangue. Right side, Danny Espinoza, just to be safe, got down on a knee to get everything behind that one. Two outs. Top of the order, Mark Ellis. The Nats trying to break a three game losing streak. The Braves had a chance to make it four and a half games last night, but they fell victim to a blue pit in the bottom of the tent down in Miami, so the Nats lead back to five and a half. Boy, if they're just one wild card, this thing will be done. It would. By the way, Chris Medlin and Josh Johnson in Miami tonight. I think the Braves have a six and a half game lead in the wild card. The Nats, you saw their lead. Five games up. Yeah, Atlanta has seven more wins and six fewer losses in St. Louis. And then it's a log jam. Cardinals. Dodgers, Brewers, Pirates all within three and a half games. 
two more ball clubs within four and a half Phillies Diamondbacks. I mean the Diamondbacks are a third base a third place ball club in the West 11 and a half out. But they're within a really good week of the wild card. This one popped into center. What a job by Jordan Zimmerman to battle back after the leadoff double. Dodgers don't even sniff a run. Desmond Espinosa and Suzuki coming up. Funky faction, uh, fashion stepping his way out from beyond the fence. It was a tight race. George looked like he had it. And then Abe, the great closer, came in to grab it. Number 16 gets the W. Pacing themselves. That was just a qualifying heat until the second game. <laughs> Bottom of the fourth, Ian Desmond tried to center first time. He was ahead 2 0 in the count when he did that. That was after a Morse base hit in the second. Michael did come around to score on a Kurt Suzuki sack fly after Danny Espinosa single. And they're the same pitch that Michael Morse just took for strike three looking. And it was a ball, huh? Yep. Desmond airing one out, but that was a changeup, 83. 34 year old Aaron Harang signed as a free agent by the Dodgers. Last December went 14 and 7 and 28 starts for the Padres last year. That's a good looking fastball. Not as hard as 188. Changing speeds effectively and really using the outer edge and getting calls out there. They're going to set up there again. Why not? Didn't quite run back far enough to punch him out. Harang showing good command on that outer half, keeping the ball down nice. Desmond to take a little bit of contact from that one. Hmm, Desmond might have been thinking, hey, he's going to go out there again. Dove to the outer half, got a two seam fastball in. Fouled it off his foot. Danny Espinosa checked in with a base hit. Broke his bat, flared one down the line and right, breaking a one for 22. Desmond lines it hard, and to his left, Hanley Ramirez. A good pl play to take a hit away from Ian Desmond. That might have been a leadoff double. You, you look at the angle that Matt Kemp was taking behind Ramirez right here, and this ball might have been ticketed for the gap. Hit so hard, a good first step quickness by Ramirez being ready for the baseball. But he just robbed a double for me and Desmond on the infield. Just when the Nats thought they had him out of the division, wouldn't have to see much of him. 
Here come the Dodgers in September. Espinosa drags a bunt. Looks like a base hit. Perfectly done. And Danny Espinosa is two for two. Well, once you get that thing past Aaron Harang, that's a knock all the way. Mark Ellis, a very good defensive second baseman, but with the speed of Espinosa, you bring it with you, good form. Get it right to the second baseman, and the key is get it past the pitcher. It's a knock. If you got any kind of speed at all, that's a hit. Perfect bunt by Danny Espinosa. Probably looking to steal a base right here. Harang, very deliberate to the plate. And as we mentioned earlier, Espinosa has run well this year. 19 stolen bases. 25 attempts. He still has a chance to be a 2020 guy sitting on 16 homers. He'll have to start powering the ball with that shoulder. And a couple of good at bats here today. See, that's a designed hold from the bench. Don Manley put that play on right there. Pitcher will come set and just hold it until the hitter calls timeout. Meanwhile, there's two, three coaches on the Dodgers bench looking at Danny Espinosa, seeing if he's got a little jelly leg going, tipping that he might steal. Back easily standing up. Nats have 90 steals on the year, 11th in the National League. Two of the best pitching staffs in the NL getting together in this series. Dodgers third in ERA, right behind Cincinnati. And the Nats have been number one pretty much all season. And Suzuki ahead. While behind in the count, beautiful job of flying deep to right for a sack fly. First time up. Well, AJ Ellis is setting up out there, and Orang is just hitting his target. And getting strike after strike out there. Two and one. That's a guy that knows what he's doing as far as the strikeout goes. He established a Dodger record on April 13th. He struck out nine consecutive Padres hitters. He struck out 13 in the game. It tied a career high. So when he's got good command and he can hit a spot, he can punch you out. Strange thing about it. Strikeout to walk ratio not very good this year. Came in with 123, and he had walked 77 batters in 164 innings. Runner going. Base hit right behind the shortstop. And with the play right in front of him, Danny Espinosa, no choice but to stop. And Kurt Suzuki having another fine day with the bat here at home. He made lots of fans in this ballpark on the previous homestand. And now Jordan Zimmerman comes up and FP you got first and second one out with a good hitting pitcher waiting. We really benefited from Rick Eckstein, Davey Johnson talking to him about pulling the baseball once he became a national. You see the jump from Espinosa right there ball hit too hard even though he started to go to third base. But you've seen Suzuki lately just pulling the hands in looking to be aggressive early in the count. And even with two strikes not getting cheated. This is interesting. Jordan Zimmerman, good hitter, three sacrifice bunts on the year. At times over the last couple of years, he's been the best bunter on the staff. He's going to swing away, and the runners are moving. So Davey Johnson letting the Dodgers know there's no guarantee we're going to lay one down right here. Fake bunt, hit, hit and run. <laughs> Possible double steal. <laughs> Other than that, not much going yeah, that on. That was a boring play. Start both runners from a bunt stand. He pulls back a little butcher boy action. If you look at Adrian Gonzalez at first base, he is creeping hard. He's looking to get Espinosa at third. Should Zimmerman bunt it to first? Hoping that Jordan's not swinging away. Hey. Squares early. Lays it down. That's a beauty. Harang to Ellis. It'll go 1 4 on the sacrifice. But you can do that with a great athlete who's a starting pitcher and knows how to handle a bat. Take a shot before you bunt. Yeah, I like it. Yeah. If you saw how Aaron Harang was set up right there, he was set up to throw to third. Then he heard his catcher, A.J. Ellis, yell 1-1-1. One, one, one. He choked it off and went to first because of the speed of Espinosa. 
Good bunt by Jordan Zimmerman, killing it right out in front of the plate. And watch Harang set up. He's trying to start to turn his back to third. And you see Ellis pointing to first, choked it off, went to first. Two runners in scoring position for Jason Worth. Worth 0 for 2. Interesting so far. Both at bats, he's been ahead. And then he's flied out in routine fashion. So he's seen a lot of pitches from Harang here. But he's only 3 for 15 career against him. Boy, right now, if you're hitting and you're thinking away and you just dive out there and smoke something to right, you've got a pretty good chance to get a fastball in the outer half right now from Harang. Seems, Seems like a bread butter pitch, huh? Yeah, about 80% on the outer half fastballs to everybody. That one right on the edge. Closer than a lot of the other ones have been. And the count's even 1 1. And Karp, if, it, if a pitcher's going to throttle you back and forth and go in and out with this fastball, that's a rough at bat for a hitter. But if he just stays on one side of the plate, you just pick a side, go out there and get it. I mean, it sounds easy up here, right? You got makeup and ties on. But when you're down there, sometimes it's hard to pick up release point. The ball's jumping on you. You're thinking about maybe he's going to drop a slider on you, but right now it seems like the majority of his pitches are down and away fastballs to right handers. 2 1 pitch. And Worth will take a strike. Down and away, fastball again. Wearing out the outside corner is Aaron Harang on the Kinetic North America pitch track. Now just look at the pitch track. Don't even look at the pitch. <laughs> I mean, he just threw the same pitch he did the pitch before. All four in the outer half to Worth. 2 2 now and a step off by Harang. Espinosa third base. Suzuki at second. Tie game, bottom of the fourth. Worth reaching on a breaking ball that time. Bryce Harper waiting here in the bottom of the fourth. Worth hits it in the air to right. Andre Ethier drifting to the line and then running to the line. The Nats have stranded two more. They've left six base runners in four innings of a 1 1 game. Gorgeous day for baseball in Washington, D.C. Our game summary, Danny Espinosa, perfect day so far. Hanley Ramirez tormenting the Nats again with a game-tying third-inning single. Michael Morris, the Nats' only run, led off the second, eventually driven in by Kurt Suzuki. A little sack fly in the second inning. Kurt Suzuki in a two-strike count. Got a fastball down the way, got enough of it. To score Michael Morse from third, that was the Nats' run. 
And Hanley Ramirez in the third inning got a two-seam fastball up from Jordan Zimmerman off the end of the bat, broke it, went into the Dodgers' dugout. And that scored Andre Eath here, and that's where we stand, 1-1. Without what we saw, we think that bat might have injured Clayton Kershaw, who was taken to the clubhouse shortly thereafter. Certainly hope he's okay. That's one of the best young men you will ever meet in this game. And an outstanding pitcher, defending Cy Young Award winner. Top of the fifth. And he's back on the bench. Good sign. Young man from Dallas. He and his wife do a lot of good for a lot of people through their foundation. Ethier takes one low. It's Jordan Zimmerman's 77th pitch of the day. He's at 80% efficiency, though, on first pitch strikes. That ball rocked foul. First game of a doubleheader. John Lennon for the Nats tonight. Trying to go to 4 0. And Josh Beckett. One and four as a Dodger with a six ERA. You can see the book on Ethier right now. They're just pounding him on the inner half. Sliders in, fastballs in. Then he goes soft down and away. It'll be a long one for Espinosa. Gets there, slides, pops up. And a very good play by Danny Espinosa. The Nationals have as much or more middle infielder range as anybody in baseball with this guy and Ian Desmond. And it's all about the first step quickness. Watch Espinosa top of the screen all over that. Good jump, good first step quickness. Going a long way to his left. Good slide and play. Plenty of time to get Ethier. <laughs> Jordan Zimmerman digging the defense behind him all season long. Hey, I like the pop-up slide. Any base runner would have been proud of that. Matt Kemp. Single to left to set up the game tying base hit by Ramirez two innings ago. Let's check out the scorebook here from the last game of that Dodgers series. On April 29th, Matt Kemp already had 11 home runs. And 24 RBIs. Since then, he has hit seven out of the park in almost five months. We had the hamstring problem. He's got a, a shoulder thing going on right now where he ran to the wall in Colorado a couple of times back to back. So we've seen what he can do when he's 100%. And trust me, one of the best players, one of the most talented players in the big leagues, bar none. Out of play, right side, count remains one and two. Adrian Gonzalez won four two with a double. Matt Kemp drove in 126 last year. Runner up to Brian Ryan Braun is the MVP, and that's a fastball upstairs. Remember that rain out here at Nats Park last year that wasn't made up. You know, the Nats were 81 and 82 at the end of the season. And I thought that might be a reason why Matt Kemp didn't win the Triple Crown. Oh, uh, now it's Ryan Zimmerman's turn. Right side of the infield, left side of the infield, and two sparkling outs here in the fifth inning. Now you've seen it all year long. Going to the glove side and plays shallower than most third basemen because he likes to get to the ball quick. He's on his toes. First step quickness again. We've shown all season long Ryan Zimmerman on his toes, almost like a tennis player getting ready to receive a serve. 
Gets to his feet quick. Good throw around the money. Nice play. Well, the Dodgers could have something going here in the fifth inning. Defense has said no. So here's Adrian Gonzalez. He drives it to left, slicing into the corner. Short and foul. I mean, what a luxury to have this defense behind you all season long, especially the infield defense. Now Ryan Zimmerman's had his throwing problems this year. There's no way to couch that, but when you have the plays he's made on the slow rollers, going to his left, Danny Espinosa showing all the range he's shown, the strong army, and Desmond at short with the range and the arm strength he's shown, and Adam LaRoche, who I think should be the gold glove first baseman at first. Who's better than him? Yeah, just keep the ball down, let your D work. If gold glove voters this year go on defense, and, you know, offensive numbers contribute to that. But if you look at defense first and then the numbers, Adam LaRoche has to win the gold glove. Popped up on the left side of the infield, Ryan Zimmerman. Thanks to the defense, it's a 1 2 3 for Jordan Zimmerman. Bryce Harper to lead off, bottom of the fifth. 0 for 2 today, but swinging the bat very well in the month of September. Zimmerman and LaRoche to follow in a very well played 1 1 game. LaRoche, see if the defense gives the offense a little momentum here. He debuted against the Dodgers back in April. His first big league hit, a line drive off the bottom of the fence in center field. Remember him flipping off the helmet to show the full hawk. And then how about the defense by Harper in center field? Day game crashing into the wall. Made a great throw from left field on his debut, too. And we're sitting up here going, yeah, 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 we like this guy. Yeah. <laughs> he might be here to stay. Yeah, pretty good. Here they are, and it's brought to you by Kia with a full lineup of high-quality, stylish, and dependable vehicles. That kind of describes these four guys. To learn more, visit Kia.com. Todd Frazier, we mentioned, hitting for higher average than Harper. Rosario, the 25 homers, half of his games at Coors Field. And, of course, Wade Miley. Nothing wrong with 15 wins by a rookie pitcher. Well, when you talk about what Harper's done the month of September when the games are the biggest, he's hitting 316. Nine of his 18 hits have gone for extra bases. Four home runs. When the chips are down, he's been clutch. He'll take on 1 0. It's in there. Change up. Count even. They're going to jam him here. And it's under his bat. One and two. And a good slider right there from Aaron Harang. Tight, late, tough to pick up. Good pitch. That fastball sure looks quicker than 90. Ryan Zimmerman is two for two opposite field today. Target away. And it just seems like Aaron Harang in this game is far more comfortable to his glove side. You know, everything into lefties, away to righties has been right on target. But if you saw that right there, that was supposed to be off the plate away. It was yanked all the way back to the inner half. So he's comfortable to one side of the plate today for sure. 
That's a great take. Wow. That's not a rookie take right there. And the count's full. Harper's walked 51 times this year. 107 strikeouts for a brand new kid on the block. You'll take that ratio. And a 3-2 driven to the gap in right center. This is at least two, and you know what he's thinking. He's thinking three. Here comes the relay. He is safe at third base. The energy that Harper has brought to this ball club, that's his eighth triple of the year. And we were talking about it. This ballpark's going to get filled up fifth, sixth, seventh inning. Right now, it's starting to get full. Bryce Harper lights up the crowd with a leadoff triple here in the fifth, and you called it. Hey, here comes the runs where they tag you offense. We've seen it all year with Bryce. Not happy with a single, stretches it into a double. Not happy with a double, stretches it into a triple. And put your head down. And right there, when he saw the throw offline from Matt Kemp, that was the clincher. And Kemp got to it quick, threw it in quick, but the throw was to the first base side for Mark Ellis. He had trouble getting to the baseball, and that was the difference. That may be, you see him make the decision right there. Good base runners, folks, don't need base coaches. They make the read all on their own. Bryce Harper did just that. He saw the great shot of the look over the shoulder, saw the throw offline on the relay, and decided to stretch a double into a triple. And I think that may be the first time all season long that his helmet has stayed on on a triple. <laughs> well, Zimmerman. There's an RBI out there. The Dodgers play the infield back here in the fifth inning. Any bouncing ball that's not back to the pitcher or a one hopper to the third baseman, most probably a run. Ryan's driven in 84 this year. So, so for you young players at home, when you have second already made, you're thinking about third. You go hard into second base. And when Bryce Harper looked over his shoulder, he saw that throw from Matt Kemp to the first base side of second. He knew that Mark Ellis had to go get that baseball, and that's where he made the decision. We saw the look over his shoulder. The fact that the throw was offline turned a double into a triple. Zimmerman right side. There's your RBI. Nats on top, 2-1. to one. It's number 85 for Ryan Zimmerman. Got a boy Hart read his lips right there. Absolutely. Got him to scoring position. Got him an RBI. Good piece of hitting by Ryan Zimmerman. Take what they get. Down ball to the second. Puts the Nats up two to one. Right hander, Sean Tollison warming for the Dodgers. Harangues at 85 pitches with one out in the fifth. Boy, little things like that in pennant race baseball and October baseball, taking the extra base win you ball games on a consistent basis. It's not always about the long ball in the postseason. It's about doing the little things. And right there, Bryce Harper just put the Nats up two to one by doing something little. One on one to Adam LaRoche now, who was intentionally walked with Zimmerman at second, two outs last time up in the third. Once the count got to 2 0, oh, the Dodgers did not want to mess with Adam LaRoche and his 94 RBIs. That'll be inside, 2 and 1. And he bounces it. Three balls, one strike. Rick Honeycutt and Don Mattingly. One of the smartest left-handers of this time, Mr. Honeycutt. And a 3-1 pitch. Adam looking to drive that ball the other way. He's done that effectively this year. He has 11 RBIs in his last 15 games. Michael Morse has a hit today. And this one straight back and out of play.
Well, take advantage of DASDAC's mobile ordering. Delivery to your seats in minutes. Go to DASDAC.com slash Nets. Select location. Some restrictions do apply. And a 3-2 with one out. Close. Great batting eye, Adam LaRoche aboard. That'll be his 62nd walk of the year. We saw how LaRoche came out of the box. He was waiting for Brian Knight to make the call, but anytime you see a hitter walk that slowly out of the box on a 3-2 pitch, he knew it was close. Well, into some right-handed batters. That's been a strike today. Tollison ready if needed. This is Don Mattingly on his way to the mound. Mattingly, his ball club, a game and a half out of a wild card. He can't let anything slip away. This call to the bullpen packaged by the UPS store. We love logistics. Air Force being brought to you by Navy Federal Credit Union. Serving the military for over 75 years. If you're in the Army, Marine Corps, Navy, Air Force, the Department of Defense, or your family is, we'd be proud to serve you. DynCorp International, we serve today for a better tomorrow. And we recognize the United States Air Force tonight. Thank all of our armed forces for their dedication to protecting the safety and security of America. It's a beautiful night on the banks of the Anacostia River here, just south of our beautiful capital. And as rush hour passes by on I-395, we couldn't be more relaxed at our perch <laughs> here at the ballpark. Sean Tollison will be the new pitcher. He's pitched a double-A Chattanooga, triple-A Albuquerque this year, and a combined 282 ERA at two levels of the minors before they called him up. Check out the right-handed average against coming. 138. Right-handers wow. just 9 for 65 off Tollison. Two-pitch guy. Fastball slider. Fastball in the low 90s. 24-year-old right-hander out of Baylor. Michael Moore's jacks one foul. On the first offering he saw. One on, one out after the Adam LaRoche base on balls. And that's have taken the lead here in the fifth. Right in there, 92. Tollison, 6'2", 220, out of Allen, Texas. And right down the road at Baylor of the Big 12. They've had an improving baseball program down there for a number of years. Target way away on 0-2. Morris, a late emergency hack to stay alive. 
Ian Desmond 0 for 2. Killed the ball last time and Hanley Ramirez took. A possible extra base hit away from him. Morse on a breaking ball to Ramirez. Setting up for the relay Mark Ellis. And they turn the 6 4 3. That's it for the bottom of the fifth. But the Harper triple and the Zimmerman ground ball put the Nationals on top. Thank you for protecting us every day. Well said by the young man from Mississippi. Here's the young man from Wisconsin. Jordan Zimmerman, 90 pitches, 65 strikes, great ratio through five innings, one run. You can bid now on game used jerseys from Harper, Gio Gonzalez, Davy Johnson, Chin Ming Wong, and Tyler Clippert. Go to nationals.com slash jersey auction. It ends at noon on Thursday. Some restrictions apply. Some of the guys will take the jerseys off their backs for you. I'm looking at the Nats bullpen right now. It looks like a 24 hour fitness at rush hour. <laughs> it does. <laughs> Jumping jack, stretching, a little sprint here and there. Four or five guys up at one time. There, there you go. There's a class, CrossFit. Nice. Zimmerman faces Hanley Ramirez. And the 0 1 pitch is swung on and missed. 92 miles an hour with movement. Hanley one for two today with an RBI his 87th of the year to tie the game back in the third. Jordan's only given up one hit since then. So he's retired seven of the last eight Dodgers. And his defense helped him in that regard last inning. Target in. And he missed his spot but he got the strikeout. Only his fourth K of the day and that's just fine. Kinetic North America on the pitch track. Yeah, climb the ladder, 0-2 count. Hanley Ramirez, top of the strike zone, can't catch up. Big first out here in the sixth. Jordan Zimmerman and the Nats looking for a shutdown inning after they took the lead in the bottom half. Kinetic North America from the warfighter in the field to the data in the cloud. We protect our country's most critical assets. Shane Victorina, 0 for 1 with a steal and a walk. Mixing in the breaking ball, just missing 1 1. Attacking with a fastball. Espinosa! Unbelievable grab on a short hop to his right. Unreal infield defense here in the middle of the game. And for those of you maybe seeing the Nats for the first time this year, we've been lucky enough to see this defensive play all season long from all four of these guys. Man, a lot has been said about the pop and the home runs from this infield, but look at that play by Danny Espinosa. 
Just a one-hop seed to his right. Goes into another slide, and Jordan Zimmerman is digging it once again. Hmm. How about the leather thrown around by the Nats defense here in game one? Luis Cruz now with the bases empty, two outs. And you could argue these guys have taken three hits away from the Dodgers in the span of the last five batters. I don't think you'd have to argue. They have. That's going to be just to the right of the first base bag as Cruz almost snuck one down the right field line. So thanks to the defense, the Dodgers box score a whole lot emptier than it could be. And they're beginning the one run, three single, third inning. Ethier and Kemp with hits, and then the Ramirez RBI hit base hit. 0 2 now. I mean, you're looking at a second baseman in Espinosa that was thinking the worst about his left shoulder that he tore a labrum. Got good results from the MRI. Back in there today with a shot of cortisone. And how big has he been on, on defense today as well as offense? That's one of his top two or three plays of the year right there. Yeah. And he's had a bunch. Anybody that thinks you wouldn't miss Danny Espinosa just hasn't watched this team enough this year. He's been crazy valuable just on defense alone. Guy hitting seventh with 16 homers and 52 RBIs. And a 2 2 pitch. Dodgers bullpen. They've got a lot of arms out there. Matt Guerrero throwing now. Guy you want to stay away from out there is Kenley Jansen. He was dominant in that three game series out at Dodger Stadium back in April. Well, he's back now as their closer, and he's had an irregular heartbeat, and he's missed a lot of time. The Dodgers not so much worried about him pitching with that irregular heartbeat, but if he got hit with a baseball in the chest area, they didn't know what would happen. So he's back for the Dodgers in the closer role. And they picked up Brandon League from Seattle to help out at the back end of that bullpen. Set a couple of saves for the Dodgers. Three and two now. Zimmerman trying to put away Luis Cruz, who doubled left center last time up. He's going out that way again. And again, with this ballpark playing a lot bigger in the cool temperatures, a couple of drives staying in. That two weeks ago might have been rattling around the back end of the bullpen. So the Dodgers have another base runner here in the sixth. Yeah, from where we're sitting up high here, you're just hoping this stays in the ballpark. And Cruz with another backspin double in the left center field gap, get on top of a high fastball from Jordan Zimmerman, wearing the left center field gap out today. His second consecutive double in the same spot. Tying runs aboard, two outs, A.J. Ellis. This could be Jordan Zimmerman's final inning. He's at 103 pitches. See, this is where the Dodgers have to have somebody on deck. They have Mark Ellis out there right now, and, and you have to have an on-deck hitter. You know, if you're Davey Johnson, you don't know who's pinch hitting. I mean, you have to put somebody out there, and it has to be the next hitter. It can't be the leadoff guy. It's a rule. And the rules made so hey do I pitch around this guy with first base open and two outs or do I go after the guy on deck whether the guy on deck's a deep or not you have to have somebody out there yeah Nick Punto just did come out one and one to Ellis and a drive to right Jason Worth is there and Jordan Zimmerman's going to go six in game one of this doubleheader and give up just one run Nat still on top
Kingdom. I obviously think the two go hand in hand. Great defense by the Nats in the infield. Steve McCaddy chatting with Jordan Zimmerman probably as well as we've seen him throw the ball his last four or five starts. Yeah, absolutely. Great tempo, too. When you're playing defense behind a guy that's pounding the strike zone, he's getting the ball and throwing it. You're on your toes. That's why you're seeing all the great plays made behind him today. But taking a peek down there, Burnett and Matthews getting loose last inning. I'm looking down there right now. Nobody getting loose. So I don't know if Jordan Zimmerman's day is over yet. We'll see. He's approaching 105 pitches. I don't know. Maybe in October you got to have these guys primed to go 110 or 115 if you've got a grinder type game in the playoffs. And of course, Jordan exactly one year ahead of Steven Strasburg in the Tommy John post-surgery process. And that ball is driven by Ian Desmond on the first pitch to the Gapman left center. And how many times have I said that this year? The Nats have another run aboard in scoring position with nobody out. How many times you said it today? And we just talked about Luis Cruz with a couple of doubles in that gap. Ian Desmond with a big lead off double here in the six fastball right down the middle been a fastball hunter a fastball killer all season long and now it's up to danny espinoza to get ian desmond to third or better here with nobody out he has absolutely crushed the ball twice today it's like ryan matthews is starting to throw now here's espinoza two for two one run game time to at least move that runner Espinosa took one shot at making this a four to one game. There's Ryan Matthews. Play that same bunt that Espinosa did last time up for a base hit, that drag bunt to second base. Would work nicely right here in this spot, but he's thinking bigger and better things, swinging away. Paco Rodriguez, the pitcher you saw. Espinosa flares one to left. In to grab it, Shane Victorino. Nationals box score. Seven now, eight hits, counting the double by Desmond in this inning. And the RBIs in the second by Suzuki on the sack fly. In the fourth by Ryan Zimmerman on the ground ball. So two very productive outs driving in runs today. And that one was not a productive out right there. That's a ball late in the game in a one run game. You've got to find a way to get to the right side. Roger Bernardino on deck after Suzuki here in the sixth. Kurt Suzuki's had a perfect day. The sack fly back in the second. Base hit. After that, and he looks at a strike from Sean Tollison, who got the double play ball ending the fifth inning. Suzuki now hitting 257 in a Washington uniform after hitting under 220 in Oakland prior to the trade. That's a good move right there by Tollison. He's a, a base stealer. You see a guy do that. It doesn't have to be a good one. It just gets you thinking he's paying attention to me and he can't leave as soon as he picks his lead leg up because he might do it again. And Desmond, 17 steals and 23 attempts. Might have been thinking about third base until that move. And now the pitch under the hands of Suzuki called the strike one and two. It looked like a good pitch. Might have caught the inner half. Let's see what pitch track has to say. But I thought it was a strike. So it's a one and two count battle for Kurt Suzuki here. Breaking ball, left center, it's falling on a hop to Kemp, and the Nats will have first and third with one out. 
That base runner's got to play that one carefully. And Desmond over to third base. Another outstanding day now for Kurt Suzuki. A couple of knocks to go with the sack fly. Tough read for Ian Desmond right here. Matt Kemp was tracking this all the way off the end of the bat. Dumped it in softly to center field. But watch Matt Kemp. He looks like he has a beat on this the whole way. So Desmond does a nice job of squaring up to the baseball. You go belly to the ball right there. Pick up your outfielder. Once it drops, you advance one base. Nothing else you can do. Now a big spot, obviously, for Roger Bernardino. Could be seeing the left-hander, Rodriguez. And then the Nats could always switch off. Matt Guerrero has been warming up Paco Rodriguez for a while. So a pitching change with Roger Bernardino coming in. The Nats trying to increase their lead. Ian Desmond doubles to lead off the inning. One out later, Kurt Suzuki singles him to third, so the Nats have something going here. Bottom of the sixth, trying to take command of this ball game. Steven Paco Rodriguez out of Miami Beach, second rounder this year. So he has been fast tracked to the big leagues here. He'll face Tyler Moore, who's now batting for Roger Bernardino. Yeah, four pitch guy, fastball slider, cutter change. Fastball going to low 90s. Cutter in the upper 80s. Takes that left hand way back behind his body and whips that fastball in there. And for whatever it's worth, maybe the best name in the big leagues, Paco Rodriguez. I love it. And in this corner, well, he's in for a battle here with Tyler Moore. That's rookie, six for 26, couple of pinch hit home runs this year, and six RBIs. Had a big pinch hit in New York. A little bouncer right side. That'll score a run. It moves up both runners. And the Nats lead 3-1. to one. And talk about three productive outs with RBIs attached today. Now you come off that bench after sitting there for two-plus hours. It doesn't matter what it looks like. You get in that runner from third base, that's a great at-bat. Hit it hard, hit it soft, get him in. That's all that matters. And Tyler Moore and the Goon Squad doing it once again. That's a rookie with seven pinch RBIs this year and 27 in part-time duty. That gets Suzuki to second base, and here's Jason Worth. They'll walk him and go lefty-lefty with Bryce Harper.
just about everybody in baseball rooting for the Nationals here except those in Atlanta as the Nats try to put a dent in the Dodgers wild card hopes that very tight race there in with St. Louis Milwaukee Pittsburgh maybe the Phillies. So worth a walk for this 36th time this year. And the Nats have had hundreds. And for every one, Care First Blue Cross Blue Shield contributes $50 to the Boys and Girls Club of Greater Washington, D.C. So 433 walks over $21,000. Take that first step towards a healthier and more active lifestyle. Go for a walk. Well, for those of you who might be tuning in for the first time catching the Nats, Bryce Harper day games goes with the high stirrups. Night games pulls them all the way down. Sun's out, calf's out for Harp. He's one for three, triple last time that electrified this game. Got the Nats on top when Zimmerman drove him in with a ground ball. Up and in. You see versus lefties this year, 229, six home runs. And I feel like that's heading north. He's been hitting much better against lefties the last two, three weeks. Yeah, the power numbers are just fine. Look into left field on that one, and the count's even 1-1. One, one. Good shot right there. Bryce Harper asking Brian Knight, is that a strike? He said no. It was out. That's a big breaking ball that ends up way outside. And that's a slider right there from Paco Rodriguez. So you've got 21 years of age on the mound, 19 years of age in the batter's box here. And the count's 2 2. I don't know how he reached it. That thing was curving away from him. Bryce able to get a bat on it. Slots, tables, and dining, the ultimate triple play. Hollywood Casino, Charlestown races. We talked earlier about the run differential. With a 3 1 lead today, it's up to plus 130. 656 runs against 526 given up. Very impressive. That happens when you got the number one ERA and a good offense. That pitch inside, and Harper got a piece of it. Oh, a personal battle going on right here. Bryce Harper fouling that tough pitch off. Looking out to Paco Rodriguez. <laughs> he'll do that. He'll, he'll, he'll go eye contact once in a while. Hook horns with the pitcher. I think he likes that. He enjoys it. I'm talking about Bryce. Rod Rodriguez doesn't face too many guys younger than he is. Sean Burnett now with Ryan Matthews. Bullpen coach Jim Lett with them. Bottom of the sixth. The Nats have scored to take a 3-1 lead. Two runners aboard with two outs. Harper pulls it. Gloved by Adrian Gonzalez and to the pitcher. That's it for the bottom of the six. But another good frame for the Nats who tack on another. Now it's up to the bullpen.
Over the hump for the week, right? Grilled chicken here at the ballpark. So this one's going on to the top of the seventh inning and a 3-1 lead thanks to Jordan Zimmerman. Yeah, he was grilling some chicken on the mound today with the heaters up and away for strike three. Well-placed fastball today. Good life on the heater. And he knew from the beginning he has A stuff down in the zone. You see the curveball right there to Adrian Gonzalez, but his best pitch was his heater up for strike three. And that's the guy that if he gets on track for the Nats going into October, look out. Yep. Well, the Washington area Toyota dealers donating $37 in tribute to Steven Strasburg's uniform number to the Children's Inn at the National Institutes of Health for every K this year. That's where kids get great medical treatment with their families at their sites. Thank you, Toyota. So Ryan Matthews gets the call. It'll be his 60th appearance just behind Clippard and Burnett, and he'll face veteran switch hitter Nick Punto here. And he'll see two-seam fastball, four-seam fastball. Two-seam runs hard away from lefties. Slider and a split to go with it. Punto 200 in 65 games, 125 at-bats. A homer, 10 RBIs for the Red Sox before coming over here in that mega deal to the Dodgers. Late for that one. Punto with the Dodgers, four for 18, and as a pinch hitter, one for five. 34 year old uh, veteran infielder. Signed with the Red Sox, a two year free agent deal last December and then traded at the deadline with Gonzalez Beckard at Crawford and a ball served to left Michael Morse went in and the ball's way over his head he took about three steps in and knew he was in trouble and a leadoff double for Nick Punto. Now we haven't seen that from Michael Morse this year just thought this ball was hit in front of him and if it would have stayed where he started it was right in his tracks was convinced this ball was going to drop in front took three hard steps in and then had to go run after it. So that extra one the six looks huge right now. Mm. I believe that's the third leadoff double of the day for the Dodgers top of the order coming up Ellis Ethier and Kemp. Matthews gets the ground ball, but it's foul. And a double by Adrian Gonzalez to lead off the second, a double by Luis Cruz to lead off the fourth, and another double here in the seventh to lead it off. Mark Ellis is 0 for 1 career against Matthews with the ground ball. Keeping that ball down and in, trying to keep Ellis from hitting the ball to the right side. And with that great sinking action of his, it's a wonderful pitch to a right-hander. If he can get it close. This is going to be more of a mental challenge for Ryan Matthews today, coming off that rough outing in Atlanta on Saturday. And you just don't want to have the here-we-go-again mentality after the more misread in left field to start the inning. Well, hopefully it goes like after it did when he had that home run nightmare in Milwaukee because he was untouchable for about the next month and a half. Well, he's a mentally tough guy, but you know, you're going to be tested right now. These games are getting hotter as you get to the end of the, the season. And Sean Burnett waiting. Ethier on deck, the left handed batter. And then two hitters behind him, Adrian Gonzalez. There's a grounder, but it's hit behind the runners, so advancing easily is Punto as Desmond throws out Ellis. A good pitch by Ryan Matthews right there. 94 in the hands. He was hit softly enough so that Punto could advance. So here comes Davey Johnson to get Ryan Matthews, who could have had two outs.
But now a runner at third and one out. Sean Burnett on the way. State Air Force, thank you for protecting America every day. Thank you, and well said, Tom Gorzolani. Top of the seventh, that's holding on to a 3-1 lead here. And it'll be a lefty-lefty coming up with Sean Burnett. Take the Nats with you everywhere you go this season. What's left of it? New low pricing in September for MLB.TV, baseball everywhere. More details and to order, check it out, nationals.com. Sean Burnett and Andre Ethier. And Burnett, a three pitch guy, fastball, slider change, fastball, two seam variety running into Ethier. Upper 80s, low 90s. Ethier 0 for 3 career against Burnett with a walk and a strikeout. Big run at third for the Dodgers here with a one out, seventh inning. And that jam shot, strike one. An interesting side note to the leadoff double by Nick Punto. Davey Johnson burned Roger Bernardina in that pinch hit, usually late in a close game. He puts Bernardina in for defense in the left field. Mm. Because of the move by Don Madden, he countered with Tyler Moore to get that extra run across. Your point being that that might have been Bernardina catching that ball instead of Michael Moore's missing it, huh? But Davey Johnson, an offensive guy, always going for more runs. That's just how he thinks. That's how he manages. We've seen it work all yeah. season long. Then he got the RBI from Tyler Moore. Well, Corey Brown's a pretty good outfielder. Maybe we'll see him later. Good call. Or if the game's close, he might want Michael Morse's bat to stay in. It'll be interesting. September baseball expanded rosters, postseason implications. 0 oh 2 now. Burnett swing and a miss. Off speed at 79 for the second out of the inning. Kinetic North America going to pitch this one, the pitch track. A yeah, great slider right there from Sean Burnett. Two strike count, set it up nicely. You see him getting on top, out in front. Good release point, stays closed. And is this ever interesting? Sean Burnett versus Matt Camp. Here we go. They've met one time, and in that at bat, Matt Kemp lined out. The reason I say that is Matt Kemp is hitting 379 with 10 home runs versus lefties this year. 39 for 103. Yeah, when Burnett's hot, he's not your average lefty. But he has had some issues lately with the sore elbow. Well, he talks about it all the time. Carp is a minor league starter coming up. Every lineup he faced was stacked with right handers. So in his developmental stage as a young pitcher, he actually worked on getting righties out more than lefties. Feels just as comfortable against right handers as he does against lefties. One ball, one strike. Or the outfield defense against Kemp, and that strike two is really interesting. You could drive a cruise ship through the gap in left center. Look where Bryce Harper is. 
while Michael Morse is straight away. And it looks like Sean Burnett with anything up is going to stay away from Matt Kemp late in the game. I'll just say you wouldn't get very far with the cruise ship though. It would fit though. <laughs> Pretty short cruise. Two balls and two strikes. We'll find a way to make it entertaining. <laughs> Matt Kemp, one for three today, robbed of the hit by Zimmerman last time. And he's reaching and lunging to stay alive against Sean Burnett. But when Burnett's sinker is right, you see right-handed hitter after right-handed hitter lunging for the two-seam fastball. It's late, and it's tough to pick up. Christian Garcia up. For a moment, I thought the Nats might be trying to get him ready for Kemp. But then there's Adrian Gonzalez right behind him. 2-2 Two -two is low, blocked by Suzuki. Huge pitch coming up right now. Adrian Gonzalez, one for three, second inning double. Jordan Zimmerman struck him out, then popped him up next two times. 3-2 and walking is Kemp. So by losing Kemp, you've got another lefty-lefty matchup here. Burnett and Gonzalez, who's 0 for 5 career against him. Yeah, but you also put a guy on first base that can steal second. Stolen bases on the season for Matt Kemp. He's been caught four times. And that's a low number for him because of a hamstring. Davey Lopes, former Nats coach, one of the most knowledgeable baseball men in the game over there for the Dodgers. Another connection to our history is at third base with Tim Wallach, the former expo. Great coaching staff. Mattingly has assembled. And strike one from Burnett to Gonzalez, who, as I mentioned, 0 for 5 career against him with two walks. Fastball away to a pull swing. Another fastball outer half. Look at Adrian Gonzalez. He's trying to yank that thing out of here. Good pitch by Burnett. Good call by Suzuki. No balls and two strikes. Target was in. That's where Sean will try to bury that fastball in there. That's okay to go in there, but you better you better keep it below the knees. We'll see where Kurt sets up now on one and two. That might have been a two seam fastball in to get to the slider away here in a one two count. Just to show it to him, huh? Yep. There it is. Did he go? Yes, he did. Gonzalez asking for an appeal to third, but Brian Knight, the home plate umpire, said it was a strike. No appeal needed. That was very close. And the Nats hold on with a two run lead. Mercedes-Benz of Alexandria 
Good offensive day and defense for Danny Espinosa. Jordan Zimmerman pitching well enough to win his 11th game of the year. Ryan Zimmerman's had a big day with a couple of hits and a very productive RBI out. Nice job, Bob Zimmerman. Let me take these highlights right now. Roberto Clemente award winner today. And Ryan Zimmerman having a big day. Jordan did as well on the mound, but you see the double the other way. The great defense at third base that we've seen all year long. And Bryce Harper with the double stretch in the triple. And just give them what they take. A simple ground ball to second base. Gets the run in. Gets down to the dugout. And thanks, Bryce Harper. Way to go, Hart. For the RBI. So a pair of Zimmermans beating a pair of Ellis's so far in this game. <laughs> It's all about the Zimmermans. On to the bottom of the seventh, right-hander Matt Guerrero will take over. Came back from the DL August 30th, had some right elbow tendonitis, limiting him to just 12 games all year with a 4.09 ERA. Facing Ryan Zimmerman. And if that was the fastball at 90, that was dirty. Fastball, slider, curveball, change. And you know, that was a hard slider or a fastball that just took off. Either way, dirty. Ryan Zimmerman, career against Guerrero for two. Thirty four year old right hander 70 games for the Dodgers last year after eight years in Minnesota. Good tight late breaking slider there. I mean we haven't faced a team since April and you play in late September. It might as well be interleague play and because you haven't seen him in so long especially from a bullpen standpoint when you haven't seen a guy in five plus months. Not easy for either team. Drew Storm now walking up the mound. In the eighth inning, Hanley Ramirez, Shane Victorino, and then Luis Cruz. So two right-handers around the switch hitter. Great work by Sean Burnett, Adam LaRoche waiting here. In the seventh, the Nats on top. 3-1, they've out-hit the Dodgers, 9-7. Zimmerman waited for that breaking ball. Right field, Andre Ethier. Now LaRoche and Morse, and we weren't with you from Atlanta Saturday when Adam LaRoche reached 30 homers for the second time in his career. Previous high, 32 with the 06 Braves. He did this in Atlanta. And we've seen him do it on off speed all season long, just that extendo swing where he lets the curveball get deep. Got the beautiful sweet swing, the high finish, the backspin, and another helium home run. That was $200 more to the Children's National Medical Center. Thanks to our very generous Washington area Lexus dealers. Nats have hit 173 home runs, only Milwaukee at 184 more in the National League. Dodgers have hit 99, only the Giants fewer in the National League. Ballparks have something to do with that. Matt Kemp's injury, of course, keeping the Dodger power numbers down. Pretty good fastball on 2 and 0 got the corner. <laughs> Adam LaRoche has never faced Matt Guerrero. Oh for one with a pair of walks today, one intentional. Target in.
Waiting for the breaking ball. Flies it deep left field near the line. It is going to hop and go over the yellow line. It's a ground rule double for Adam LaRoche. Beautiful job of taking what Guerrero gave him and almost rode it out of here into the corner. Well, we just showed his 30th home run on a curveball in Atlanta. Now his 30th double of the season, a curveball away from Guerrero, and he rides it all the way to the warning track in left field. Watch him stay back on the curveball. Kind of a hanger on the outer half. Nice job of going the other way. I've said it a couple of times today. Very cool day here at Nats Park. Wind blowing in from left field. Middle of summer, that ball is gone opposite field. Today, a double. Well, you've been calling him the coolest guy on the team all year. Adam Cool. 30th double. Michael Morris is swinging a miss. Nationals in a position to tack on another run. They've done it in consecutive innings. More so for one with a strikeout career against the Dodger right-hander. The Nationals trying to win their 90th game of the year. Cincinnati at the Cubs tonight will be trying to do the same thing. The Nats have played two fewer games than the Reds. One of those will be made up tonight. That's on the inside corner. Catcher was set up away. Michael Morris surprised by that one, but it got part of the plate. I'll tell you this. Michael Morris is not sending Brian Knight a Christmas card. There's no way. He, every borderline call has gone yeah. against him here today. He's, he's had Andre the Giant strike zone for Michael today. Two balls and two strikes. Just huge. That's a slider that appeared to be low, and Clint Fagan says no swing. Three and two. Pretty good sign right there for Davey Johnson. The rest of the ball club, when you have a sore wrist and you can hold up like this, it's a sign of strength. Not easy to stop a big bat like that once you start it. Maybe that wrist is healing up after eight days off. And a three two. Michael got a slider. One out in the inning. Ian Desmond doubled and scored last time up. He's hit the ball hard twice tonight. Good battle now. Well, Half Street starting to get a little full coming down from the Navy Yard Metro Station here at about 19 minutes to 7 o'clock. There they come. Oh, you got to figure this ballpark's going to be rocking for game two. They'd love to see a W on the board for the first one. 3 2 again. And Morris high in the air to center. Drifting before it is Kemp. LaRoche tagging and heading for third base. He's there with two down. Win a signed game-worn jersey right off the back of a Nats player or a coach. Raffle tickets sold at the ballpark until the 23rd between 4.30 and 8.30 at the Dream Foundation kiosk out in the center field plaza. All the proceeds benefit Nats charities. Winners to be announced on Sunday the 23rd at the game. You do not be a need to be present to win. Ian Desmond, one for three. He's lined out hard. He's doubled to left center. And he's 0 for 1 against Matt Guerrero. He, he just feel like that he's had the most two RBIs of any Nat this year. And a ball lifted to left, but he didn't get it. Victorino waiting. And this one's into the eighth inning. 
Well pitched by Zimmerman and the Nats bullpen. Six more outs to get. visit your local Dodge dealer this week and by AT&T the nation's largest 4G network AT&T rethink possible a lot of activity at the team store as we're getting ready for the final two innings of this game maybe only an inning and a half and then the nightcap here at Nationals Park on a cool evening our Masson mobile word of the day that you can text to 29292 is Stretch run. Okay, that's a couple of words. It's your chance to enter and win a lunch with Ryan Zimmerman. And the more you watch Masson, the more chances you'll have to win. Top of the eighth, Drew Storen to take on the likes of Hanley Ramirez, Shane Victorino, and Luis Cruz. I just feel like Drew Storen getting stronger every time he takes the ball. And a three pitch guy, fastball, slider change, fastball. In the mid 90s on average, he's thrown a little bit more than he has in the past. Last year, 64% of the time. This year, 71. So more heaters from Drew in 2012. And we've talked about this over the last couple of weeks. The slider getting a little more bite all the time. Hanley Ramirez is one for six career against Drew with a couple of walks and three strikeouts. First pitch, and uh, Hanley's going to dump one into left field. Well, Hanley Ramirez keeps doing it against the Nats. Two for four today, has an RBI, and he's aboard here in the eighth. The barrel's overrated today for Hanley Ramirez. First time up, did a nice job of moving a runner. Lead-off double by Adrian Gonzalez. Next time up, he had an RBI single with a broken bat. That time jammed again for a second hit. Who needs a barrel? <laughs> Shane Victorino is next tough guy to double up. But because you have a two run lead. He's got to be hacking Zimmerman will be even with the bag at third. Well this this guy can surprise you and bunt for a hit. There's a guy swinging the bat really well who's on deck right here. Fastball high in the zone for a strike. Luis Cruz. Back to back doubles in the fourth and the sixth to the same spot. Out near the bullpen. Just a sun coming through one of the portals at the top of the grandstand here at 6:47 local time. That ball slapped to the right side. Can they do it? Not quite. It takes a one hopper with hair on it to double up Shane Victorino, but the Nats will settle for the 4-6. 
Espinosa did a nice job of getting rid of this ball quick, getting Ian Desmond a chance. I think the only way you turn that double play is maybe you run up in the line and tag the runner, but good play by Espinosa and Desmond. But the speed of Victorino on a chopper, especially from the left side, you're not getting him. Now he's a running threat with one out, though they're down by two. And here's Luis Cruz. He and Drew Stewart have never faced each other. And the first ever outfield shift where you see all three outfielders in the left center field gap. That's where Cruz has hit two doubles today. Jamie Wright, Ronald Belisario. There are right handers warming for the Dodgers. And Storen firing a fastball over to Adam LaRoche. For a strike. 96 with some great life. Good sink, started on the outer half, ran it back almost to the inner half. Runner starts, stops, and the pitch up and away. Counts even. And that ball foul tipped. Drew Storen going right after the hitters here in the eighth inning. Catcher, A.J. Ellis, 0 for 2, hit by a pitch, is next. One and two. Breaking ball away. Victorino with a healthy lead. He's running. Swing and a miss. Victorino gets second base, but Cruz is out. Second steal for Victorino, his 37th of the year. But a big out for Drew Storen, two down. Yeah, picked a good pitch to go on a slider in the dirt. 13th steal as a Los Angeles Dodger. Nothing Kurt Suzuki can do right here. He gloved it. Probably didn't get a good grip. You see him right there? Yeah. Drew Storm, we've timed him before. He is it in the high ones to home plate. And there's been occasion where he's actually been a 2.0 to home. It's one of those things where he doesn't want to sacrifice stuff to speed up his delivery. Here's the catcher, A.J. Ellis. What a stop by Suzuki. <laughs> Backhand reaching way out there. And a very familiar name to us is in the on-deck circle. Haven't seen him in a while. Check out the glove work right here. Reminds me of a guy we saw here last year, number seven. Remember that guy, Pudge something? Yeah. Rodriguez or something like that. One ball and no strikes to Ellis, who's 0 for 2. The inning continues. The pitcher spot is next. Bobby Abreu is waiting there. Storen's fastball just missing upstairs. 2-0. It's Bobby Abreu who they got after he left the Angels. 
The other guy who used to do damage against the Nats when he was in Philadelphia, part of that lineup up there. Right now it's Storn and Ellis. And he gets the 2 0 pitch in there, whistling to the outer half. That heavy sinker. How about that? 95 with nasty dive. And 95 like a left handed slider. Look at that. Wow. Kurt Suzuki having a little wrestle with it at the end because of the movement on the 95 mile an hour two seamer from Drew Storm. Those are not comfortable for catchers right there. <laughs> That's a wiffle ball sinker in the backyard. Only guy that hits that more is the hitter. Two balls, two strikes. Ah, the killer slider. And the top of the eighth is over. He got it up a little bit, but Ellis couldn't reach it. And Drew Storen gets it at three big outs on their way to a W possibly. And the pitcher's spot. Drew Storen pitching beautifully after Ryan Matthews and Sean Burnett out of the Nats bullpen. Far solutions to help you achieve your financial goals, PNC Bank, for the achiever in you. Well, FP always says when we look at these kids, call him up. The Nats have called up Corey Brown twice this year, and he finished with Syracuse at 285, 25 homers, the steals, the runs, and he is an all star according to Baseball America. Should be. And one big league home run too, so 26 on the year for Corey Brown. Jamie Wright at the age of 37 now. Last couple of years with Seattle, he's bounced all over baseball. Couple of stints with Colorado, started his career with the Rockies back in 96. Once a very prized prospect out of Oklahoma City. And this season, Jamie Wright. 59 games with a 3.48 ERA, 51 strikeouts in 62 innings. Danny Espinoza faces him for the first time. Gets jammed and fouls it back. And right a four pitch guy, fastball slider, cutter, curveball. Fastball two seam variety in the low 90s. The slider will go in the mid 80s. Cutter in the upper 80s. Curveball in the mid 70s. Danny Espinosa, good day. Two for three. Flared one down the right field line. Bunned for hit beautifully in the fourth inning. And then flew out in the sixth. 
has made two dazzling defensive plays. And the one he made on Shane Victorino, one of his top two or three, not only this year, but maybe in his big league career. And the closer, Tyler Clippert, is throwing. One ball and two strikes. The Nats are trying to win their 45th game of the year at home. They've already won 45 on the road. Trying to break a little mini three game losing streak. And there's a possibility if they win both games of the doubleheader and another game or so works out among wildcard teams, they could have the postseason berth clinched by the time they go, they go home tonight. Big three outs to get yet. You got to win the first one. Oh, yeah. Way outside. Three and two. Leadoff runner would help here in the eighth to give Clippert a little more of a cushion. Suzuki next. He's had a good night. But that still have a bunch of left handed bats, including Corey Brown, Steve Lombardozzi, and Chad Tracy. Target is in on three and two. Espinosa can't reach it up and away. 30 minutes after this one's over, John Lennon will take them out for the Nats. And he's trying to make it 4-0 oh on the year. There's Josh Beckett who starts for the Dodgers. And he was 6-13 for the Red Sox before coming over to L.A. And then John Lennon. With that 2.41 ERA, and worthy of note, he's 4-1 career against the Dodgers with a sparkling 2.64 ERA. That's the nightcap. Coming off that 2-0 win in New York on Wednesday, five and two-thirds of shutout ball for John Lamb. That's a busted bat. Suzuki took him forever to get out of the batter's box. After that serious jamage, two outs. And Tracy now will pinch hit here in the bottom of the eighth inning. And a reminder for all your Nationals ticket needs and wants and possible celebrations, log on to Nationals.com. Pick out some dates between now and the end of the season. The Dodgers here tomorrow night. The Brewers are here for a wraparound series that will take us into Monday afternoon before the guys head up to Philadelphia. Make that last trip to Philly and St. Louis. Chad Tracy. Man, has he seen Jamie Wright in his career? Seven for 21 with two home runs and two walks. These two know each other very well. You know, both National League guys, both in the same division for a long time. Wright with the Rockies, Tracy with the D backs. And of course, he's batting for Drew Storm. Well, a couple of guys think they can catch up to Jamie Wright upstairs. So he's had a great arm, an injury filled career. He hasn't pitched over 100 innings since 2006 with the Giants. Getting some work out of the bullpen though, and he's won five games for the Dodgers this year. Since August 30th, he's been money's out just six hits. One six for 36, 167 average since August 30th against Jamie Wright. Now Rick Honeycutt. Pitching coach of the Dodgers, watching a guy trying to keep his career alive and doing a pretty good job of it. On a 3 1 
The Nats are gone. One, two, three. Bottom of the eighth. Tyler Clippert against number nine, then the top of the Dodger order. First half of the doubleheader, this copyrighted telecast presented by authority of the Washington Nationals and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Washington Nationals. So Tyler Clippard's been uh, thirsting for a safe opportunity. Hasn't had one since last Tuesday at New York. I gave up a couple of hits in that outing. Struck out to gave up an earned run. But Clippert four pitch guy fastball cutter curveball change. Fastball in the low 90s change up probably his best pitch. Dodgers will go with the pinch hitter Bobby Abreu designated for assignment by the Angels. After only 24 at bats in eight games there this year. 241 for the Dodgers. Couple of homers, 17 RBIs. As a pinch hitter, six for 27 with two batted in. Interesting to see his approach here as a pinch hitter. You remember him back in Philadelphia? I think it was either 09 or 010. He saw the most pitches of any hitter in the National League. Not afraid to go deep into account. Yeah, a lot of years with Philadelphia, then on to the Yankees, the Angels for a while. He's never faced Tyler Clippert in that fastball changeup combination. That's the heater, 92, right in there. And they're taking the strike all the way. Robbie Abreu, 50 strikeouts, but 33 walks as a Dodger. Challenge fastball upstairs 91 and the counts one and two. Top of the order next with Mark Ellis and then Andre Ethier. If the Dodgers do not go in order, the Nats will have to deal with Matt Kemp one more time. Guys that know the strike zone like Abreu does, if you're going to strike him out, it has to be a pitch that looks like a strike and falls out of the zone. I don't think he'll chase anything high. The changeup might be the pitch right here. There it is. That's a fastball, 93. Just a little bit up and in. You know, maybe throwing this fastball in. You get the call. You get the call. Good pitch. Didn't get the call to get to that changeup on the other side in a two-strike count. Changeup lashed into right. Jason Worth right there for the first out. 
Byron Kerr and Ray Knight are in the ballpark, and we invite you after the ball game here on Masson to tune into the Nats Extra Post Game Show presented by W. B. Mason. Top of the order, Mark Ellis. 0 for 2 career against Tyler Clippert. Fastball near the ceiling of the strike zone, but a little up. Let's see now if you're Tyler Clippert and you saw the way Mark Ellis took that pitch and you saw Bobby Abreu take strike one, you know the Dodgers are taking a strike, trying to get the tie and run to the plate. So he'll go with the changeup at 80 and get a strike with it right on the outside edge near the knees. One Washington top of the ninth. The Dodgers have had two hits since the fourth inning. Thanks to Zimmerman, Matthews, Burnett, Storen. And now Clipper trying to close it out. That's 92. And the count's even 2-2. Two -two. 92 to the spot that Aaron Harang was darting for about five innings today to right-handed hitters down and away. Brian Knight likes to call that one a strike. Good pitch. He goes with a changeup, and that's going to be in front of Jason Worth, and Mark Ellis is on for the second time in this game. Now barring a double play, Matt Kemp bats in the ninth. Mark Ellis, such a tough out. What a piece of hitting right there with two strikes. Got the changeup down the way, didn't try to do too much, just put it in play to the right side. Gets the tie and run of the plate. Good at bat by Mark Ellis. Andre Ethier one for four opposite field single back in the third against Jordan Zimmerman and Clipper darts a fastball in there at 93. Now be careful on that inner half to Andre Ethier that was supposed to be on the outer half. Got strike one. Roche playing near enough that the runner can't just automatically go to second base. I like what the Nats are doing there. LaRoche is backing up on the pitch, but he's hanging around on the bag so that they just don't give them second base and possibly keep that double play in order. Ethier's hit into one tonight. No balls and two strikes. Tap of the glove by LaRoche. He retreats. Fastball up. Good pitch. Good take by Ethier. Seen a lot of hitters this year in the National League swing at that high fastball. Tough to decipher if it's going to be down the zone or stay up. Two driven to center. Harper is there. Two down. Doesn't always seem like it comes down to the big guy for the last out. Representing the tie and run. Nice crowd has gathered for the end of this game and the start of the nightcap. Matt Kemp is two for seven career against Tyler Clippard with a triple and a walk. Kemp is one for three with a walk in game one.
And the first pitch fastball upstairs. Backed him up just a bit. Now the Nats concede second base to Mark Ellis with two outs. No steal given. Michael Morris is under it, and the Nationals have won 90 games. The magic number for the playoffs down to one, and for the division, down to nine. Clifford, number 32.